I've been waiting on this part of the build for a while, so let's get some wheels on this KLR. I have yet to find anyone who actually enjoys installing tires on rims manually, and I'm certainly no different, but it is a necessary skill to have, especially if you ride dual sport or adventure bikes. The wheels and tires that I'll be installing today were purchased from 3D Cycle Parts. If you need parts for your KLR, you should check these guys out. They're not sponsoring the video, but I wanted to mention them because the service I received from them has always been exceptional. So if you need parts for your KLR, I suggest you check them out. I'll leave a link in the description below. So I've left these tires in the sun for a while in the hopes that it would soften them up, but that doesn't seem to be the case. These are the Shinko E804s. The front is a 909021 and the rear is a 150-70-18. I'll be installing these new shoes on a new set of wheels from Warp 9 Racing. These are the Elite 7050 series, which are a little bit heavier duty and especially designed for adventure bikes. The front is a 21 inch, but it's a little bit wider than stock at 1.85 inches, but the back is an 18 inch, which is larger than the stock 17 inch, and it's also wider at 2.5 inches. The lead time on these wheels um, was quite significant. It was a little bit over six weeks, but that's because they build these wheels per order. These wheels seem very nice quality. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. Uh, the proof will be in the pudding, I guess, after I get them on the road, but even the warranty speaks for itself and to the quality of these wheels. Pretty much if you have any problem with a wheel, I think you have to pay a $60 deposit or deductible and uh, they will completely rebuild the wheel for you. So I'm using Tusk heavy duty inner tubes, not because I wanted to, just that's what came in the box when I bought the bike. And when they say heavy duty, they really mean heavy duty. These um, inner tubes are stout and quite honestly, I'm not that big of a fan of really thick heavy duty. Uh, inner tubes. I find it hard to believe that it actually helps all that much, but it probably does if you're dealing with thorns and thistles and that sort of stuff. But it sure makes installation a little bit uh, more difficult to say the least. So if you can't tell by now, I'm certainly no tire installation wizard. If you want a good tutorial on that, I suggest you check out someone else's video because you're not going to get that information here. But I did get the tire on, so that's all that matters. I'll repeat the process for the rear, but I'm not going to show you just because it's plain boring. You can see my daughter here who's watching me feels the same way I do about installing tires. So I've taken the wheels to a local motorcycle shop here that will balance them for me. And so while I wait on that to be done, I can get all the other parts ready for the installation of the wheels. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I've spent an enormous amount of time cleaning parts before painting or just cleaning parts before installation. Some of this is completely unnecessary. I just can't bring myself to install dirty, greasy parts onto a bike that is essentially new. But it certainly added a lot of time to this project that I wasn't anticipating. I was happy to see that this cush drive damper was in decent shape. Those things are surprisingly expensive and out of stock everywhere that I could find. Before I inspected them, I thought for sure that they would need to be replaced. So not having to spend that money is certainly nice. The rear sprocket that I'll be installing is a JT sprocket. It's a 43.2, so same as stock, and it is steel. Um, I would have liked to have a nice fancy aluminum steel hybrid, but this one came with the bike. So this is what I'll be installing and it looks like a nice sprocket.
that wraps up the Kush drive assembly. Now I just need to get it installed on the wheel. This is a really chunky wheel with a larger diameter rim and the large big block tires. I hope I have enough clearance in the swing arm. If the tire interferes with the swing arm, I really don't know what I'll do. I don't really have a backup plan other than using a smaller tire, I suppose. With the addition of this spacer, that'll wrap up the rear wheel. Now I just need to install the brake rotor on the front wheel. So I lost some footage in the camera, so you'll miss the excitement of me putting this rotor on the wheel. But it is a Tusk Floating Typhoon 320mm rotor. I should point out that the Warp 9 wheel came with a rotor already installed, but since I'm doing the 320mm upgrade, I had to swap it out. Finally, the moment has come. I can put the wheel on the bike and hope that it fits. I almost forgot to install this right side spacer, but I noticed a substantial gap and after a small heart attack, thinking that the wheels were made incorrectly, I realized that um, I was missing a part. Other than that small mishap, the rear wheel was real easy to install. It helped that I had the jack stand to, to control the height just right. And as you can see, I have about a half inch of clearance between the swing arm and the tire, which isn't a lot, but it's a whole lot better than not having any clearance at all and it'll have to do for now. So this will wrap it up for the rear wheel. Um, now I just need to get the chain installed and then I can adjust everything and torque everything down. The chain I'm using is a primary drive gold chain. It's the standard 520 links. I've never used a primary drive chain before, but again, it's what came with the bike, so that's what I'll be installing. But the quality looks good. I'm just going to guess on the chain tension that I need right now. After the bike's fully built and weighted down, I'll have to come back and readjust everything anyway. But for now, I at least want to get it to where I think is acceptable in case I forget to do it later on. It'll at least be tightened down and usable. I finished this case saver with the same bed liner spray that I used on the other plastic parts. It turned out nice, I think, and it looks a lot better than the weird green color that uh, the plastic is molded in. Well, that's it for the back drive and wheel. Now on to the front. 
I wish there was an easy fork swap for the KLR because this wheel and this oversized rotor really makes the forks look even smaller than they are. And they are small. No forgetting the spacers this time. For the front shaft, I was smart and kept everything on the shaft like it would came off the bike. So that helped me not to forget anything. So I've capped off the speedometer cable because I'll be using a trail tech to replace the stock speedometer cable and I don't want dirt and grime getting in there. Well, that does it for this video. It's nice to see the bike on its on two wheels again. Everything's really coming together, and I think this bike is going to be something special when I'm done. And as always, thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.